Yeah, uh, so hi everyone. Uh, I'm Sohal and I work as a developer advocate at LifePeer. And today I'll be leading a workshop on building the future of video with LifePeer. In this workshop, we will be covering on what is LifePeer, how, who can use LifePeer, what problem does it solve, and how to integrate LifePeer into your application. Uh, so before that, uh, we know that approximately 80% of the internet traffic is accounted by the video. This means that the large majority of the content over the internet is in the form of video, such as streaming, video on demand, uh, video sharing on social media, and also online video calls. Uh, this is the reason why our brain, uh, our brain loves video, because it is programmed to retain the visual content better than the page loaded with the words. Usually an average viewer remembers 95% of a message when it is watched, whereas only 10% when it is read. However, there's the one catch to the video uh, sharing. It is very expensive. Video streaming and also transcoding can be very expensive to the uh, applications who are building for the, um, building for the users. And one of the main factors is the amount of data and the bandwidth that is required to transmit, receive high quality, and uh, transcode the videos. In addition to this, the video streaming and transcoding uh, requires a specializer technology and infrastructure such as the powerful servers and high-speed networking equipment. And furthermore, the video streaming transcoding can be a resource intensive, uh, meaning it could increase the cost of hosting and delivering the video content. And yeah, so it is very expensive. And the solution to this problem would be LifePeer. Uh, LifePeer protocol is a decentralized video streaming and video on-demand platform that uses blockchain technology to enable anyone to easily and affordably stream live videos uh, to the global audience. It is built for developers and it aims to increase the reliability of the live and on-demand streaming while reducing the infrastructure cost by up to 50 times. Who uses LifePeer? Like who's LifePeer for? Well, the life, uh, LifePeer is for developers who want to build application on top of LifePeer and use its uh, broadcasting or live streaming feature or maybe on-demand feature to serve the uh, video on a decentralized network. Or it is for users who want to stream the video of maybe gaming, coding, or any entertainment into your uh, uh, mobile phones using the LifePeer. At last, it's also for broadcasters such as Twitch or YouTube, um, who have a very large audience and also very large uh, creators uh, that would it, uh, significantly decrease their bills and infrastructure costs. And how does LifePeer work? Uh, well, when you broadcast a video, the, uh, the broadcaster sends the video to the LifePeer network, and the LifePeer network transcodes the video uh, using the nodes that is powered uh, by the LifePeer, and it is deployed on Arbitrum blockchain. Uh, after that, the video gets distributed on a global CDN, and after that, the users would be able to play the, the transcoded version of the video. So for those who don't know, transcoding is basically a process in which uh, the video gets uh, transcoded into different formats. Uh, for example, if it's in a 4K, the video would be uh, transcoded into 240p, 360p, and 1080p, just to ensure that uh, the video gets played properly on different devices, internet connection, and also browser. LifePeer growth has been very tremendous this year. We had over 2.7 million transcoding uh, minutes uh, per week. And yeah, so this was about LifePeer, and we have both LifePeer APIs, which you can use. And one of the best ways which you could interact with the LifePeer network would be uh, LifePeer Stadium. LifePeer Studio is an open source dashboard for interacting with the LifePeer network. Uh, it is used to create and also manage developer API keys, assets, and streams. Uh, it's course, completely open source on GitHub. And basically, most of the uh, many Web3 video applications are currently powered by LivePeer. For example, Halo Zero One, Beam, uh, LensTube, Bonfire, Stream 8.tv, and many other applications. And yeah, so this was just an overview of LivePeer on how does it works and how you can use it. And uh, now I'll basically go through uh, a demo app on how we can basically integrate a, a LivePeer into a sample application. Well, let me just come back. Yeah, uh, so I just uh, go through a tutorial on how to use LivePeer into your uh, React application. And for this, we would be using LivePeer.js. 
Yeah, so LivePeerJS is a SDK built on top of LivePeer Studio API. Uh, it is basically it pr provides the ready-made hooks uh, and also components to easily build applications with React or maybe Next.js uh, and LivePeer. So the first thing which we're going to do is open up the terminal and go to the directory where we want to create the application. Uh, in our case, we want to create a folder named, uh, for example, Eat India. And then inside of the folder, we want to create a, a React application. So I'll just say npx uh, create a React app and then dot, which would create it inside of this folder. So this will create us a sample React application. And until it's completed, uh, we can go to the livepeer.cdu, uh, which I mentioned it earlier. And here you have to go ahead and create an account. It's pretty easy. And you would basically have a transcoding minutes of uh, 1,000. Uh, basically, I think it is enough, enough for many of the projects. But if you go over it, uh, you can basically pay, which is like very uh, negotiable amount, like 0 0.001 per minute. Uh, but yeah, once you are here in the live peer studio, you can go to the developers and click on create an API key. Uh, you want to name anything for your API key, and then also allow cars. And here I want to allow from everywhere, and also give a full API access to the API. And then we want to create it, and then copy the token ID uh, here for now. And now let's see if our yeah. So now the React application is completed. We can run. We can open it in the VS Code. Yep. So this is our React application. Let's run it on a local dev network. Yeah, so now the application is running. Uh, what uh, we want to do is we want to install the LivePeer JS, which you can do by running npm i LivePeer slash React. And this would basically install LivePeer JS into our application. Until it's completed, we want to do a little cleanup into our application. So I would delete the app.js, app.css, the um, test files, the logo here, and also here. And then index.js, I would just remove the last port here, here, and yeah, that's it. Coming back to the app.js, I would remove logo and app.css. So we want to create a very simple uh, React application. And yeah, so now we have updated the code to this one. It's a very sim a simple. Um, message basically for now but yeah so once the livepeer.js is installed in our application uh, we can come to the index.js and basically create a client to do that we want to import create a react client uh, and import it from livepeer react and also studio provider studio provider and at last we want to also import the livepeer config Live peer config. So we have imported these three packages. Now in here we want to run const client is equals to create a React client, and here we would put the provider CDU provider, and here we want to put our API key which we created here. So I just copy it, and then basically put the API key here. API key. Yeah, so once we have put the API key here, let's close the bracket. And yeah, perfect. Now, uh, at last, we have to basically uh, remove the strike, uh, strict mode and also wrap application with LivePeer config. LivePeer config, and then the client would be client. And here we can import app. So, yeah. Mm. Can't client it. Yeah, just come here, get started, and yep, this is it. Call back the API key and then paste it here. And yeah, so now we have live purges integrated into our application and we can use the hooks, components and everything uh, just to test like if everything is working fine, like if we have integrated successfully. Uh, we have a hook uh, named LivePeer Provider. So we can import that, uh, use LivePeer Provider. And here we can say const provider. Uh, 
is equals to use live peer provider and here we want to put our provider name so we say provider dot basically get com fake dot name and yeah once we save it here we should have live peer residue yeah which means the integration now works fine and our application is integrated with LivePure. In this demo application, we want to basically create a very simple uh, upload and transcode uh, video. So what we can do is uh, we want to use, uh, first uh, maybe let's put it, uh, let's create the input or let's first create the state const video is equals to set video. Hmm. Yep. So, and here we want to keep an input, and this input would have a type file, which on change, it would be basically uh, set on the state which we have, the set video one. And yeah, that's it, let's save it, and now we have this file picker, and for now we can keep it like that, and then here we would have also a button, like create asset, and then on click, for now, we just yep, yep. For now, we can keep it like this. Yeah. So we have a file input and also a button. Uh, so here, what we want to do is we want to basically import the use create asset, which is an asset to create a, a video on the live peer network. So we say uh, const. I mean is equals to use create asset and here we want to put our video so in my case it's going to be for example sources and in the sources we want to keep it like it's an array so since we have only one video so i just put it this way and here we at last we'll have a name for example what would maybe we can keep this one video dot name and also at last you want to also put the file so we say file is equals to video. Video dot name. Yep. So this would create an asset for us, this hook. And just to make sure that we get the correct responses, you would also add a few. Um, yep. We add a match weight and we put it like on create asset. And then we would also add a data that you'd get in response. We will have assets this one and maybe progress if in case we need it. And yeah, so pretty much this is the hook which we want to use. And here on the button click, we can say if the video is not there, you can disable it. Oops. Yep, now it's working. Maybe I can just come here use create assets so this is documentation which you can use like you can have all the assets and hooks which you can take a look and yeah so this is the code which we would be basically using it like there missing colon okay Let me remove the TypeScript one, save it. And yeah, so we have the button, disable it. And yeah, so now it should work. Just to see if the progress and everything, we want to also add this one and the error message. And let's put this here and save the file. Cool. So now if we have to update this, yep. And now, so let's come here, click on choose file. This would open up a video for us. Maybe I can find the video. Rweave.net uh. slash D. Okay. 
Okay, we don't have a demo video. I don't have a demo video to upload it, but basically, it's once you choose a video. Uh, okay, yep, got it. So we have a video now. Uh, once you have the video, you can click on create asset, and this would basically upload the video to the live peer network and transcode it. And once we have the video back, it would basically show us here. So currently, it's been an uploading process. We can come back here, close this, and go to assets. So this is how you'll be able to create an asset using LivePeer.js. And one more thing which I want to like uh, add to this uh, workshop, and that would be completed, is basically the player component. The player component is like easy to use uh, uh, HLS player, which you can use to play the videos on the LivePeer.js. Uh, so for that, we have a guide on how you can basically play back the IPFS and RV video. As we know that both IPFS and RVs are not uh, CDNs, they are a storage. So in order to play the video uh, properly without any buffering, uh, basically you would want to use LivePure. It would play back the transcoded version uh, for us. So we have already set this up and I think, uh, yeah, so you don't want to go through that one, but this is how you'd be able to also uh, transcode the videos from IPFS and or with. Uh, just to show you an example, uh, we have a few, I put uh, some examples here, like or with. And if I basically put the or with link here, it would take a minute for the video to get transcoded and then save it into the Live Peers network. And once it is done, you would be able to uh, basically play it. Just in the case, I can also Live Peer and then the story. This is an example application. So, for example, if I want to play this video, the video would be uh, played actually. So, this is how the uh, Live Peer transcoded. It would play the any type of video on either on IPFS and ORWEF. So this is an example with the Orweave that uh, any size, it could be transcoded and then play back the most optimal uh, version. Similarly, like this one or this one. So I think due to bad turn it, they don't play it, but yeah, it should work actually. And yeah, so this is regarding the live peer. I hope you understand on how to use them. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions.